What's up guys? Uh, I hope that this video is valuable to you today. That's my goal and my goal is just to help you guys get better at the game and, and, and hopefully that, that this video does this. This is an expansion video. Uh, basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to give you real concepts that work and uh, through that I've, I've talked a little bit about this and I'm trying to interplay uh, some gameplay here so that I can show the concepts executed uh, and really focus on core specific principles. Uh, at the end of this uh, MUT guide, we're going to have uh, some footage basically trying to tie it all together. Uh, but for right now, uh, we're focusing today on what we talked about yesterday. And, uh, and what we talked about yesterday, we talked about how to read blitzes. And so I'm going to be showing you how this kind of fleshes out basically uh, in a head to head match. So that's my goal. Uh, on defense, I'm running. Um, my New England Patriots defense. Uh, you can get that in the description. You can also get the offense I'm going to run in the description. Uh, I know that we talked Kansas City uh, in the guide, but I'm much more comfortable showing you these concepts out of uh, the playbook I'm going to be using today, which is St. Louis. And if you're looking to get that guide, you can actually get that as well in the description. You can get both of them, and they're actually pretty inexpensive. I think they're what, maybe... 13 bucks, um, so not too bad, and they're going to help you kind of get the IQ, the knowledge, and what I'm hoping these videos do uh, is they help with that other part of it, and, and that's trying to figure out how to really apply these principles, and, uh, and I'm really, really excited about this because, you know, this is, this is where the rubber meets the road for most of us. Most of us have really, really good ebooks and really good material and really good plays, uh, but unfortunately, we're not able to implement that. Uh, into an online game and we end up being very very frustrated and uh, and I hope that that's not the story for you uh, but I know that it is the story for a lot of us so uh, what we're seeing here a lot of strong power uh, strong power is kind of making a comeback because it's a very good run against a lot of blitzing defenses uh, the nickel 335 actually in my opinion does a decent job against strong power uh, but, but it, it, it's a little bit of a di uh, it's a little bit kind of sketchy sometimes it does really really well sometimes it doesn't do so hot so so that's what we're looking at. But basically, it centers around if you're defending this, if, you know, because I know that a lot of people, uh, if you're if you're in, uh, you know, in the Madden world, so to speak, you've watched Serious Mo and you saw that he was utilizing the strong power in the Madden Challenge. And basically, what it boils down to is you've got to keep guys wide and you've got to get a user on that edge. If you can do those two things. Uh, you're going to blow it up in the backfield normally. Now, if they have a stud back, like a Dickerson or something like that, you may have a little bit more trouble. You may need to drop down to like a 3-4 solid or something like that. But for the most part, uh, you know, this does a decent job. Uh, what I like to do, guys, you know, obviously I want to talk offense. That's really why I'm here today. But, you know, through the course of this game, we will get some defensive clips in. And what I hope... We're going to have to call a timeout. But what I hope you see on my defense is my ability to play passive. Um, I think that this is grossly, grossly, grossly underestimated uh, right now is nobody's playing passive. Uh, and what I mean by that is basically what I'm, what I'm going to do and what you'll find here is I won't run a ton of pressure. And there's a reason for that. main reason centers around the fact that two men under is amazing this season it's very difficult to beat it the stock pass rush is actually pretty good if you can get one-on-one -on -one matchups and lastly I, I i'm a lot safer in two men under and i love to blitz personally right if we're just having a conversation and i want to describe my defensive style i'm going to tell you i'm aggressive and aggressive and aggressive and aggressive some more but as you'll find out you know, I I really do like two men under this season just simply because it's so difficult. Uh, there we see a little out route, but again, like that. I mean, look at all look at everything he had to do to beat that. You know, I mean, obviously he's only ran like two plays, but I mean, hopefully you see my point, and uh, and hopefully you hear what I'm trying to say. So he hasn't really made me care a ton about this strong power. As long as you get your guys wide, normally it, normally they do okay. See, because they'll hold that edge, and I mean you'll contain it at the very least. 
Um, a lot of times you'll just straight stonewall it. Uh, sometimes you have to use some contain rushes or something like that. If you guys don't know, the contain rush is actually very powerful uh, when you're talking about defending the run specifically. And really his problem is going to be running the ball to the right side of the field. So he goes to corner strike. That's not too bad of a play read there. Uh, the safe, the corner didn't drop. Or goes to corner post, yeah. I, and I, I mean, I think he's actually running Kansas City. I know we talked about this formation when we were uh, discussing Kansas City. Those are some crossing patterns. I don't know who that was. It looks like uh, Alshon Jeffrey threw it as a tight end. This is an interesting scheme, to say the least. And I'm not too worried uh, when someone just kind of like casually comes up the field on me. I'm really worried if I give up big plays. But on the first drive, especially the first drive, my major concern is to not give up big plays. You know, And you'll find that and as I just give up a big play. I knew he was going there. I just couldn't get my guy back quick enough. One of the... Real quick, guys, have you ever thought about why, and, and we're just going to go into the goal line stance here, but uh, have you ever thought about why people, like when stuff like that happens, right, we feel the need, you know, we feel such a need to defend ourselves. You know, like like for what, for example, like I just said, um, I don't know why I did that. That was stupid. But um, like, for example, I was like, oh, I knew he was going. I just didn't get back to, you know, like, Blaming the computer. Have you ever thought about that? Uh, just a just a kind of a thing to wrestle with. Because in Madden, it definitely plays it, itself out a lot. A lot of times, we find ourselves blaming the computer, like I just did, or we blame our you know blame the other person. We say they're cheesing or whatever. Uh, but unfortunately, a lot of times, it doesn't really change the outcome. And uh, you know, to get better, to get better, to get better, we got to kind of work on weeding some of that blame game out and start focusing on ourselves. But uh, anyway, one of the one of the things I wanted to say before I got into this uh, talk, one of the things I wanted to say before I got into this talk uh, today about offense was I was reading a book. Shockingly enough, it wasn't a you know sports book or anything, but it was just a legit book. And I came across this concept though, and I think the concept definitely applies uh, to what we're talking about today. The concept basically states uh, it, it basically talks about the fact that. Your eyes have the power to read material very, very quick, to basically glance at a page and then be able to give the main point from the page. And I thought about that in the terms of Madden and the whole idea of what we're talking about today, the pre-snap reads and then post-snap, uh, basically post-snap configuration. And, uh, and that's really what we're trying to get across here. We have the ability to be quick on our reads. Uh, the bottom line is we just need to kind of execute. We just need to you know, head down, crush it, uh, give ourselves time. No huddle is essential for this. Uh, almost, it's almost a, a requirement, right? Because when you go no huddle, it gives you the opportunity um, to basically have time pre-snap to make reads, and and that's really the point. So, all right. So right here, for example, I'm sensing he could blitz me off that left edge. It's normally the main one. Uh, so I'm going to try to get some middle floods because again. He was baseline pre-snap, and so that means that I have a pretty good shot at getting over the middle pretty good. Uh, the goal the goal right there was simply I needed something to run me over the middle, and we were able to get that accomplished. All right, so in this situation, he's staying in this. He's in like a 3-4. Um, I'm not too overtly worried about a 3-4 defense in terms of pressure this season uh, since they've patched some of the stuff. I also know that I have a pretty good – opportunity to run unbalanced runs which what I mean by that is where you go three by one and uh, basically like what you just saw there where I motion the tight end over it gives me a running advantage when he's base line like this and uh, and so you'll see a little bit more of that if he continues to stay in this in this, in this exact defense here um, so he's obviously going to run zone if he's in three four so what I'm going to try to do here uh, is run a little is run a little screen basically to T.Y. Hilton or, or David Johnson if he does is what he does. He doesn't. He goes out and goes into some other zone. And I don't know why he threw a touch pass, but that's really, really freaking stupid. So my hand, I just, you know, for whatever reason, I threw the touch pass. I don't know. 
I think I, I think I was so busy talking what I was trying to do that I ended up throwing it. But anyway, um, through the freaking interception. So we got to get back into this. He's probably going to go to that thing again where he goes to the verticals. So what I'm going to try to do is kind of stay here. And I was right there. I hold ball hawk. Dang it, man. Yeah, he's running that PA shot play. He'll hit the, he'll hit the slant route if you. If you jump that, like for example, if you are in you know, like a flat zone, he'll have that, that little flood. Uh, what we're going to try to do here is get him to kind of basically blindly throw us one. I don't know how Peanut Tillman didn't jar that one loose. That man, that man freaking was brave. Who was that? Um, so I know that it's a little bit hard, and this is why I wanted to devote entire gameplays uh, to talking through this, because I think that it's such an important... How is it not intercepted? But I think that this is such an important topic when we're talking gameplay. Uh, and he is in Kansas City, by the way. But I think that's such an important topic uh, when we're talking through gameplay uh, because, you know, what it really centers around. Wow, I don't know. Dang, that was a good read. I just got dotted there. Uh, basically what happened was I over, I over committed on that corner probably – Probably was a bad read on my defensive side. We'll get into defensive reads later on. Um, so we're down 14 right off the NIM. Uh, but the reason I wanted to devote an entire gameplay to talking through these concept, to, through the concept of beating pressure is because it's it moves so quick that it's kind of hard to get a gauge. It's kind of hard to get a real understanding if I just was like tried to do one drive. Um, so I'm hoping, you know, by getting a little more extensive with it, and using the same, the same basic principles uh, that we can talk a little bit through this. Uh, and, and I want to make this statement. I think that the plays you run don't really matter. It's the areas on the field at which you attack. And what I mean by that is this. You have to be able to attack every position on the field. And that's the heart you know, of, of, of my kind of idea here with this offensive series and what we're really trying to do big picture. Left, middle, right. He blitzes off that right side, and I freaking effed up. Blitzed off that. He blitzed off that right edge. So he's running a lot of cover three, and I'm aware of that. So I'm just going to kind of dot in here with this route to uh, West Welker. I got this uh, West Welker card. I'm trying him out. It's the uh, West Welker that has, I think he has 99 route running, if I remember right. So. All right, so here, key third down situation. I know I have a numbers advantage here. I'm going to bring Jordy Nelson across just because I've been bringing Jordan Reed across and see if he adjusts. And there I make that adjustment to cut it back with Johnson. Uh, sometimes when you're running the ball, it's important to understand uh, that sometimes you only need one yard. And, you know, sometimes cutting it back is the best opportunity. So here he starts bringing people in. What that's going to do for me, uh, when someone stops base aligning, it almost helps me. Uh, when I'm man aligned against, it really opens up the power of my offense. I build a lot of my material off of the speed out. Uh, here you see the safety coming down. Talking about blitzing, uh, he's really got me in, in a lot of avenues. Here he goes, uh, sends a you know drops a basic coverage shell, and we're able to hit him over the middle uh, because he spray, expanded out. A lot of times when they come in like that, they'll expand out. So you always got to have a crossing pattern on the field. If you don't have a crossing pattern on the field, uh, you know good luck. Here we're able to hit this spot route to Jordan Reed. He breaks a tackle. Uh, and and we're, we're looking right now at about 51 seconds. What we're going to do right now uh, is we're going to hit Wes Welker for an out route. We're going to try to get about uh, – that's our main read on this one. Obviously, we'll do our progression, but the key is Wes Welker here, and he leaves him wide open. And, uh, and we're going to be able to get some, some, some yak yards. Not quite as many as I'd like there, uh, but we were able to do it. So he's running a lot of cover three real quick as we kind of get through this. Um, the problem is you have to come out. You know, you have to come out and you play quick. Otherwise, you'll lose your your clock. But he's coming out in a lot of um, crap. I came out in the wrong play. I got terrible players on the field too. Uh, but he's coming out in a lot of cover three uh, type plays. So so that's something to understand. And here he drops that cover two, and we're able to hit Amari Cooper for a touchdown. So. Pretty good drive there. It comes it comes down to 
Uh, if you guys notice how quickly I was reading him, and it just comes with experience more than anything, uh, but what I've noticed him doing uh, a lot of times has actually played out to my, uh, you know, to my ability to be able to beat him, uh, knowing where his pressure could come from, knowing those outside linebackers were the kind of keys to any pressure he would run uh, were those outside linebackers. And, and so it was able to really help me as I tried to, dis to discern, wow, what a play. 43, was that Ilka? That man freaking flew there. But it was able to help me kind of discern uh, as I was going through that. Uh, guys, real quick, if you do me a favor, if you enjoy this content, uh, please hit that subscribe button. I, I, I try really hard to give you guys content that is helpful. And, uh, and, I, and if you want access to my new content, you got to subscribe. Otherwise, you won't be notified uh, when that comes out. So, you know, if you're enjoying this video, please subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Uh, right now on defense, this is kind of that moment where you really got to make a stop. This is a, a critical moment. Uh, so he's coming out bunch quads. I know that bunch quads has a really hard time. Uh, beating man to man, so we'll see what he does here. Uh, I'm assuming, and there's that there's that little out route, and as you can see, it doesn't beat man. As you can as you can see, it, it really comes down to route running, right? It really comes down to route running, and as you can see, you know, it didn't beat me that time. Utilize this cover two pressure. The key in the two minute drill that he's in right now, because he's got 24 with three tos. Um, the key is to kind of go big or go home sometimes. Right here is one of those times for me. Uh, he's in bunch quads. The only problem with bunch quads, if I remember right, is it's really strong. It's going at five wide. Yeah, here we go. So there we go. There's the, ah, oh, give me that fumble, Aaron Lynch. So, yeah, he goes corner strike because he went to a man beating play because we've been running a lot of man. He comes out corner strike. We're able to clamp. Uh, right now, I mean, obviously, you know, if you get the ball back, depending on where your punt comes back, uh, you can, you know, you may be able to get a two point conversion. So right here, we're gonna see. Oh, dang it, man! I was all over the corner route. He ends up hitting me on the spot route. Probably a pretty good check down there. Uh, at this point, this is where you say, okay, i got to get into that two-man under style uh, of defense and just kind of say, you know, Bimba, don't break me. So we're just using this middle linebacker. Uh, watch this, guys, real quick. Oh, dang it, I didn't get, it. I didn't get the route, the read on him. He ends up going out of bounds. He's, he's been running this route several times, right? He's ran it from this tray open, he's ran it from quads, uh, and then his other stuff is to run it. Um, so watch this real quick. I don't know if I'm gonna do it. Oh, I didn't do it here. Yeah, he goes to that corner post. So he got about four seconds, but again, with four seconds, while you can do some damage, and see that was why, it's kinda moving quick. So we're looking at wheel, there's that crossing. There's a sack. Close to half, and we'll go into half. We'll get the ball. Uh, so that was kind of an intense. This guy's actually a pretty solid player. He's got a good team as well. It helps. But uh, he's definitely a solid player. He knows his playbook. He's using um, he's using Kansas City, and we had you know we've been we've been talking about Kansas City uh, with our Mutt Free God. I'm using St. Louis just because it it's better and easier for me to show you basically the progressions, and that's all I want you to see today is our progressions. All right, so he's seen the base play a lot. We end up going to cover two. We end up dotting him up. Um, so now he's moved on to this nickel. Uh, out of this nickel, as you can see, I don't really have any threat of pressure. Uh, what I'm going to do real quick is just kind of check down a basic inside zone and see what we can do. And we end up getting good yardage to start out. Uh, but so he's in this basic nickel, right? Uh, this is two, four, five, I believe. What this basically means is I'm going to see a lot of base coverages. Uh, and I kind of know that. I'm, I'm really anticipating uh, cover two, maybe, maybe two men under, but I'm really, really anticipating uh, that it's going to be cover two. And so what that means is I'm going to try to hit one of these over-the-middle patterns. So, yeah, he goes to cover two. And I hit T.Y. Hilton for a dot. And unfortunately, freaking Drew Brees, Super Bowl edition, overthrows him. So that means I'll have to move on from freaking Drew Brees as my quarterback. I just can't deal with overthrows, man. 
I got some good budget quarterbacks. Uh, Matt Ryan, the the newest addition. I don't know what it's. I think he's like an. I don't think he's like a 94 overall. So it goes back to this 3-4. Uh, this is kind of a critical section within the game. He's. I'm almost a thousand percent sure that he's going to go to cover two here. Um, if he doesn't, I'm going to hit one of these quick flats. He doesn't go cover two. Uh, he's probably scared. We're going to hit him again. Ends up going cover three. We're able to hit these quick flats against the cover three. Uh, it's actually a zone blitz, but but anyway, you get the picture. So it comes back out. Now he's in this three four. He's really really over. He's really really overplaying this right edge. And so we're going to run off the other side. Oh, I don't know how he did that. He's probably sending that crossfire blitz. Um, so I talked about how the safety comes down, right, when they're running a roll coverage yesterday. So what we're going to try to do here is some, let's see what this happens. He goes to two man, and we're able to check down to the back. Good run there. After catch, sets us up in third down. Uh, like I said, he's been uh, pr kind of vulnerable off this other side. We're going to try to hit him with this wide trips inside zone read. We're going to try to use, because he's base aligning, so we're just going to use motion right up in the gap. Oh, dang it, man. David Johnson going to come through for me. So fourth and one, I'm almost betting money that I'm getting cover two. Um, but I think I could still beat it. So we're going to go to Wes Welker here. Nope, he goes, man, we check down to our quick throw to the back, and we're going to burn him. Unfortunately, Johnson didn't have enough stamina in him to get to the end zone. This is the one reason it's very difficult to run no huddle uh, so much. So I'm thinking he may go to this pressure again. If he does go to the pressure again, um, we're going to look to Wes Welker on a little crosser. He stays, yep, he goes to the pressure. And uh, as you as you, as you you could see there, he was playing, he was trying to guard my running back out of the backfield. And uh, so we just easily checked down to Wes Welker. We had that route running, we had the positioning. So that's where we went. He's dialing up the heat. We're able to easily beat it with our man beaters. Uh, and that's one of the things, you know, Understanding what routes beat what uh, definitely plays into it. He's bringing that pressure off both edges. What that's leaving is islands for uh, my receivers right now. Let's see what we can do here. <sighs> my guys need a break. They're getting freaking tired. I don't know how. He just ran cover two man stock and was able to freaking... I don't know. Sometimes in this game, it is a little weird. Uh, so he's been running a lot of cover two. Why do I go to this play? Well, he's running a lot of cover two man. He's blitzing these guys. It means he's taking the safety's way. He's also not pressing Amari Cooper. That out route uh, normally is going to beat man to man. Uh, that was a pretty good play by him there. He, yeah, that was a pretty good play. He ends up dropping that safety. The problem is right now, my guys are freaking tired. So we're going to go to another play. Spot corner. It's a good play. Uh, what we're looking to do here is try to maybe hit uh, Mari Cooper. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, we got the back out of the backfield. And we got to break one tackle. Theo Riddick's got to break that tackle for me, son. Oh, dang it, I thought you had more time than this. Shoot. All right, so like I said, he's going heavy, heavy. Um, man to man, we're going to be able to. We're going to shoot for hitting Tavon Austin out of the out on this little quick out, and we're going to get him. Dot touchdown. Good drive for Drew Brees. Uh, again, I know I didn't talk enough about the blitzing. He was in quarters. Uh, if you know anything about quarters, uh, for most of that drive, he wasn't there. But uh, he was in quarters uh, for most of that drive. And what I wanted to say though was when you're in quarters. In my opinion, nothing, you're going to go man, right? And so it, it really doesn't, it, it comes down to beating man one-on-one, -on -one, um, in my opinion. So there you go.
here, Tavon Austin. Finally going to get the better of him, get in for two points. Um, and this means we're probably going to be able to run that fullback dive um, next time around. So defensively now, we need to at least make sure that our offense gets one more shot uh, to go win a football game. We can try to hold him to three. Uh, the touchdown he got was the streak, if I remember. He got me once on the streak. The other one was on a dot. Both of them have been seen passing. Uh, so that's going to play into how I defend him here. He's also run this strong power a lot, heavy power. Uh, there's a dive out of the ace, pistol ace. He's going back to his bread and butter here. Halfback slam. Talk a little bit about his, uh, his defense. Like I said, he was running predominant man to man, and um, I want to talk a little bit about it. But I, first of all, that speed out beats man. Um, if you have a good guy that has good route running, uh, it beats it really well. And so what I was doing was I was, but the thing about it is when they're blitzing you, sometimes you can't beat it in the time that you need to beat it. If that makes any sense. And and so what we were doing right there to try to kind of to try to kind of you know and that was a good play by Christian Kirksey right there give me a give me one more um, but what we were trying to do real quick so we knew he's a man he was either blitzing or going two man uh, when he went to two man uh, he had us because we were kind of gearing up to stop his pressure right And there's a there's a pretty good that's pretty good defense right there. I'll give myself props. So, first of all, it it, it comes back. Let me talk about this real quick because this was that was pretty good play. Um, so what basically just happened was he he wanted to he really wanted in his heart to go to that little out route that he'd been doing, and he'd been doing it several times. If you guys have been watching this game, he's been heavy heavy out route the whole time. And, and that's pretty good defense, I guess. But uh, he probably knew he should have went back to that toss. But anyway, so he knew it was it was a really good chess match move. It ended up I should have kicked a freaking field goal there, but uh, but anyway, okay. So what happened? So I called zone coverage. Well, when you call zone coverage against that. He's not going to throw that route, right? Especially, number one, that I was in zone. Number two, I was user controlling that side of the field, right? So it meant that the crossing pattern was what he was going to come back to. It was the only pattern I could cover, and so I ended up just you know, betting on that, and we were able to take it back to the house and maybe put the game on our back now. Now he's going to go to inside zone and verticals from this trips. Uh, this is Problem's main offense here. Uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but this was his uh, kind of bread and butter. Yeah, there's inside zone. And as you can see, I mean, it's a really hard run to stop, especially with a Todd Gurley uh, card. But the defense kind of. Third and one here. Uh, I'm assuming we'll get inside zoned. Uh, I don't know why you wouldn't inside zone me right here, uh, but we'll see what he does. Uh, but we're going to bring the house for sure. Goes a little power play. I thought that I saw this pulling guard there. And he's inside zone. Hmm. Good, good call. He's in this kind of grind it out mode. Uh, eventually what he'll do is he's going to go to verticals. I'm going to be waiting for it. I'm just going to keep the safety back. Force him to kind of run in those gaps. As you can see, it's it's it gets kind of muddy in there. Um... Another thing, I'm actually going to do this now. I know this kind of hurts this game plan. And that is to basically run this. Kind of hide behind him here. It's just going to contain the run. Uh, like I said, he's got 137. He's got to score a touchdown. I mean, you know, I mean, if you're content to do that against this, be my guess, but he's going to have to go to a man beater. 
and it's going to be this crossing pattern. I got to come down. How's that not a fumble? That's freaking Eli Manning running. It's freaking Eli Manning, guys. Should have been a fumble. So it looks like the defense is going to. I wanted to show you more offense. There's inside zone again. And he gets a big run. Let's see if he calls a timeout. Kind of, at this point in the game, it's really important to save every timeout. They're really pretty precious at this stage. I'm telling you, he's going to go to verticals for the win. And not my, my defense is so gassed. Hard not to call a timeout, but you don't want to ruin your shot. There we go. He went to that before, and you guys remember, that's knowledge, right? That's just simple knowledge, understanding where he went before uh, and where he goes now. And as you can see, we end up making the adjustment. We end up making the adjustment the first quarter, I believe, when he his first touchdown, uh, he threw a dot right in that zone. And uh, he ended up going back to it there. I already knew that was where he was probably going to go for me. And like I said, I, I, th I mean, I called the shot. He was going to run that uh, kind of seam play, and that was where he was going to kind of try to make his money. And uh, as you can see, where the defense was able to, to handle that pretty pretty well. I'm, I'm thinking he's going to go cover two. I mean, why wouldn't you go cover two at this point? He doesn't. He stays, he stays sound. He goes... Uh, cover three blitz and we'll try to just show you a drive here we'll take some timeouts he goes cover through sink actually we'll try to show you another drive see here this is immediate tell that it's probably man to man right this is immediate tell and uh and so where you go from there really centers on how you like to beat man to man but i'm a big fan of this play this year for man to man um, so, there we get that mesh over that middle. Jordy Nelson, a crossing pattern. He'll take a T.O. here, won't he? Nope, he won't take one. You see what I'm saying there? Um, so what happened, we had a man beater, basically. And like I said, it was a clear tell. When they come out like that, that is a normal tell that it's probably man to man. This is a tell that it could be a blitz if it is man. You see he'll cross across. When he comes across, it means it is probably man. And he goes man to man. Able to hit that quick out. Didn't give me the desired result, unfortunately. But I hope you're seeing that. And we're we're, we're kind of trying to use this play, uh, drive out as our kind of foundation play. And see here again, this is instant tell. This is instant tell. It is man to man. Uh, from there, you know, it, it just comes down to a matter of reads. And we're able to check down to this tight end. We haven't been there all day. Let's see if he takes a T.O. to close it or if he just lets it go. He's going he's gonna to take one. And you see what I'm saying? This is basic two men when they come out like that. That's all about pre-snap awareness. Here, he man when he man the lines them like this, this all of a sudden gives you the tell. you got two safeties up top. Blitzing possibilities are these slot corners right here uh, that are over 13 and, 80, and 86. Uh, those slot corners could come if they come. Um, you know, normally, and as you can see here, they don't, uh, but they end up leaving the tight end wide open because he left his man, and, uh, and we're going to close it with a touchdown for you guys. But I appreciate uh, you watching, and I hope that uh, something I said helped you, uh, but I hope what you saw what I was saying. Uh, when you know where the blitzes could possibly hit you from, and also when you know, um, when you also are aware of what keys you can get off man zone, right, the fact that when they come out in certain ways they're in man and other ways they're in zone. For example, here, this is definite zone coverage that I'm facing. So from that, you know, because they're not over the top of the guys. And uh, from that perspective, it now enables me to hit crossing patterns for days. So it's all about leverage. I had inside position. I threw a drag route. You see what I'm saying? Hopefully you do, guys. Uh, I know that was a really intense 35 minutes, and I hope you soaked up every minute of that. And I truly... I uh, want to tell you this, I really hope that I'm helping. And if I'm not helping, please tell me. Uh, please tell me that you need something else. But but I'm trying to help you guys here, and I hope that this video 
uh, did that for you. I hope at some at some point in this video, you guys got what I was trying to get across about being able to read pre-snap and also use that knowledge. I threw that one interception. I made the right read. I just had a bad pass lead. And again, sometimes you can make a bad read and you can be late. That, in that instance, I was late. I made the mistake and I paid the price. All right, guys. So be sure to watch this video. It's a pretty good game. 